Hello, this is Bryant Myers, author of PMF, The Fifth Element of Health, and I'm really excited about this new video series. I'm calling it Whiteboard Wednesdays. And in this series, I'm gonna answer your questions that you have about PMF therapy, so please be sure to subscribe and leave comments below. Now, this first video, I'm gonna talk about one of the most common questions I get, and that is, what is the best frequency to use in PMF therapy? Well, as you're gonna see, that's not such an, a simple answer. Let's start with a basic definition of frequency that maybe you learned in middle school, high school, or college. And so if we just kind of plot a little simple graph here, and let's just say we go one, two, three here, and we're plotting time versus amplitude, and we'll just say, and, and it's usually voltage or microtesla in PMF. Now, if this was just one second here, so we got one, two, and then three to come around. So if this was one second, see if you can figure out the frequency. Now, if you said three hertz, you are correct. Now, well, frequency might be very straightforward for simple sine waves. And again, some PMF devices do use simple sine waves. When it comes to really good PMF devices that use very complex signals, you just can't use a one number to describe the frequency. But let me give you an example. So let's say we have a complex square wave here, and we got three little pulses separated by a pause. This is not exactly straight, but it'll do the job. So here's a question, what is the frequency of this? Now, the answer is not so simple because you can't just say, well, let's just say this was you know, one second from here to here. And you might say, well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cycles in a second. But it turns out in really good PMS devices, first of all, a square wave is composed of many sines and cosines, as we'll see. But secondly, there's pauses in between. So we got a small pause here, but a longer pause here. And then some of the more sophisticated PMF devices have even longer pauses in bundles within bundles within bundles. So in order to understand complex signals, we need to look at a field of engineering called signal processing. And signal processing is the investigation, interpretation, and manipulation of signals. And a signal is simply a wave that transmits information and or energy from one point to another. And there's many examples of signals. You know, you got a radio, television, cell phone, music, voice, of course, PEMF, and even things like earthquakes. You know, earthquakes have waves and are also signals. And there's many examples. So signal processing applies to many areas of science. So within the science of signal processing, there are two main tools that scientists and engineers use. Now, we're not gonna get into Fourier's theorem and Fourier mathematics. We're gonna mainly just focus on the devices that are able to look at a signal, and it's just much more visual and easier to understand in a descriptive way this way. So the two tools are an oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer. And these are like the two eyes to see a signal. And if you're not looking at a PMF signal or any signal with these two eyes, you're either seeing through one eye or you're just flying blind. Now let's start with an oscilloscope, and I'm gonna use the IMRS sawtooth as an example. And an oscilloscope, is, me is what it's doing is it's measuring the signal or looking at the signal in the time domain. And so it's plotting the voltage or the, the magnetic field versus time. So this could be voltage or it could be say the magnetic field in well, microtesla or tesla. And from an oscilloscope, we're gonna see the overall shape of the waveform. And this is like say in an oscilloscope, you'll get a window and you can zoom in and out. Now this is like a zoomed in window and you can zoom in even further. Now on this triple sawtooth, it's triple because there's sort of three parabolic swings up and then it comes all the way down. But there's also then, you know, bundles of these four and then bundles within bundles within bundles. And the only way you can really understand this IMRS or QRS as a similar signal is on an oscilloscope. You can't just talk about frequency. I've seen some review sites that use an oscilloscope to try to say, oh, IMRS or this company is not listing the correct frequencies. When in, when in reality, they're using the wrong tool. You know, as we'll see, you're gonna use a spectrum analyzer to look at frequency. 
So what we want to see in oscilloscope, as the NASA study and other really good research has shown, that we want a rapid rise and fall signal, okay? And this actually, interestingly, comes from the higher frequencies of the signal. You can't get a rapid rise and fall without higher frequencies, but as we'll see, the higher frequencies are very low amplitude. And they don't really contribute in the spectrum analysis very much. But for maximum ion induction, you need a rapid rise and fall signal. It's sort of like when you swipe a credit card, you swipe it quickly. Or when you strike a match, you strike it abruptly. And so that's kind of like the ignition to, that, that stimulates ion transport within the cells and really powers up the transmembrane potential and cellular voltage. So it's really important to have a rapid rise and fall signal. Simple sine waves are not rapid rise and fall. So frequency in signal processing, they use a word called slew rate. And you can look at frequency as how quickly a signal changes. In fact, in signal processing, instead of cycles per second, it's easier to think of frequency as in terms of how quickly a, a signal changes. So we want to change quickly and abruptly for maximum ion transport. And we don't use an oscilloscope to figure out the frequency of the device. But we do use it to look at the complexity. So there's much more to an oscilloscope. We can look at the whole pulse train. We can look at the pauses in between the bundles. And then we can see how it switches polarity. It'll switch every two minutes. The IMRS beam or QRS will switch upside down. So this whole image gets flipped. Now, the pulses, if we could, if we could see this triple sawtooth, I'm not going it, it's to, it's going to go like there's going to be bundles of pulses within pulses. So the pause is in between. This is called pulse-pause modulation. This is going to give you a rest in between sets, you could say. It very much is like exercise. In fact, there's good research to show that PMF therapy stimulates cellular exercise. So you definitely want this pulse-pause modulation. You want there to be pauses in between the bundles. And QRS, Beamer, IMRS, Metathera, they all do this. All the good PMF systems do it. The cheap ones don't. Okay, so that's, that's the waveform. So it's very geometric. It's very intuitive. It's kind of showing you what the, what the signal will look like. Now, down here, we have a spectrum analyzer. Now, this is the second eye, and this is going to help us to see the, the signal in the frequency domain. So if we really want to understand frequency in PMF therapy, we need to understand the frequency domain. So now we're plotting hertz instead of time. Up here, we're plotting time versus amplitude. Here, we're plotting frequency versus amplitude. And the amplitude is just how much the relative occurrence of a particular frequency in the spectrum. Now, you all have a good intuitive understanding of spectrum analyzers in an everyday type of situation, let me explain where you know about them. It's in equalizers and your stereo. What is an equalizer? Well, if you don't have an equalizer, you're going to have just a simple bass and treble where you can increase the bass or increase the treble. And the treble is the high frequency and the bass is the low frequency. Now, if you've got a more sophisticated stereo, which a lot, even some car radios, stereos have this now, is you can, more than just bass and treble, you can, on the equalizer, you can increase different frequency bands. That is a spectrum analyzer. You're, you're seeing the frequency versus the amplitude. So if you want to increase the low frequency, you just put the dial it up, or you can decrease it, etc. So in a PMF signal, what the frequency spectrum, what the spectrum analyzer will show you is the full spectrum of frequency. So let's say you can see these peaks here. So the peaks in a frequency spectrum are telling you which frequencies are dominant. If you're going to talk about a frequency of a PMF system, you should be talking about the frequencies that are dominant in the spectrum analyzer. And a good example to verify this is in earthquake research. Earthquakes actually have very complex waveforms. You know, it's hard to look at any frequency in the waveform itself on an oscilloscope, but when you plot it on the frequency spectrum, you'll see that there's dominant frequencies in an earthquake. And actually, engineers or architects, you know, when, they, when they build houses, they will consult an expert in signal processing to look at the frequencies that are dominant in the earthquakes in that area. And then they can make the house resistant to those frequencies. In PMF, it's a little bit different. We want our frequency spectrum to blanket the lower biologically active frequencies in the 0 to 50 hertz range, as I talked about. And then we, we do want some higher frequencies to give the sharp edges to our signal, you know, like a, like a square wave. You know, the higher frequencies are what defines the rapid rise and fall. But we don't want those to be a high amplitude, and they're, and they're not. You know, 
by definition, to make a square wave, you use sines and cosines, and the sharp edges come from higher frequencies, but they're very low amplitude. And for, that's Fourier's mathematics, but we won't look at that today. But, but it's important to know that it almost sounds contradictory. It's like, well, Bryant, you're contradicting yourself. You're saying you want low frequencies in the zero to 50 hertz range that have been proven by Siskin and Walker, Addy and Bowen, you know, Zimmerman and all the really good research. But then you're telling me that you need higher frequencies too. So which is it? Well, it's both. The reason it's both is that, like I just explained, is that the high frequencies carry over to the shape and the low frequencies are what you want to be dominating in the spectrum analysis. Now, let me just talk about one thing that's in the QRS and Beamer and IMRS. They do list frequencies. So like, for example, Beamer, 10 hertz and 33 hertz. IMRS, 0.5, uh, 3, 5.5, and 15 hertz. QRS will list frequencies as well. But here's the thing, the morning, so let's take the, the IMRS for example, the, the sawtooth. Now let's just say this is three hertz down here. The IMRS uh, evening program is, we, we, we list it at three hertz. What that means is that what we're doing is we're taking that th like a three hertz band and just like your equalizer, we're increasing that frequency. Actually, it's very straightforward for, for an engineer, an electrical engineer. In the, let's say this here is 15 hertz. In the morning, what we're gonna do with the IMRS signals, we're gonna increase the frequency in that band around 15 hertz. And that's gonna give you more of a beta stimulation. So the dominant frequencies, like the earthquake analogy, are gonna be the most biologically active so it, in a way, it is kind of okay to talk about frequencies as long as you're understanding that there's a whole frequency spectrum and that when you're talking about the biorhythm clock or the IMRS or the Beamer, that those are just kind of the dominant frequencies that are like, a, like an equalizer, you're, you're increasing a whole band. So can you see that frequency is not as simple as people make it out to be? And anybody that does talk simply about frequency including, I'm guilty by the way, in the past of being too simple about frequency. In fact, it really has only been the past three months when I've really been studying signal processing and consulting with an antenna engineer, one of the, he's got many patents, many inventions, that I'm really starting to understand how to see a, any signal, including a PMS signal through two eyes of the oscilloscope and the spectrum analysis. So in conclusion, I do wanna mention there was an independent study done in Europe that looked at all the PMF devices available in Europe. And what they found was the IMRS and Beamer were the top two systems. And they actually only had four systems in this experiment because many of the PMF systems they looked at just had technical difficulties. Meaning, number one, their frequency spectrums were very, were very weak. They maybe only had a couple frequencies. Or number two, their waveforms were just ill-formed. They weren't formed very well. For example, maybe their square wave was kind of like this or some poorly formed square wave. And I've seen this, by the way, in the OMI and some cheap PMF devices. So they found that the IMRS and Beamer are the top two mainly because they had both had beautiful frequency spectrums. And I've seen, and I'm gonna post this online, I've seen the, the, the results from this and both the Beamer and the IMRS just blanket, you know, the frequencies very beautifully. And they have also very nice signals. There is just not many PMF devices, in my opinion, even worth looking at because they either get the, the signal, they either get the waveform wrong or the frequency spectrum is poor or their coils aren't made properly. That's another video we'll do on coils. The frequency spectrum, I like to use the multivitamin analogy because a good PMF signal that has a broad spectrum of frequencies is gonna blanket all the biologically active frequencies that resonate to your tissues and cells. It's like an energetic multivitamin. Wouldn't you rather just take a really good multivitamin than, than vitamin B1, vitamin B2, B3, you know, vitamin C, vitamin D, like this pill for this, this pill for that? Well, there's a lot of PMF devices that have very simplistic signals. I won't name names, but there's a lot of them. And some of them even have, say, like zero to 10,000 hertz settings. But that's not a good thing because you don't know, they're only, you're only able to dial in one frequency at a time. And then the big question is, well, what frequency do I use? Then they say, well, I'll do this frequency for this and this frequency for that. But then the problem with that is some people are different. So the same condition, because someone else's tissues and organs and cells have different resonant frequencies, then it's not gonna work. So by fully blanketing the full spectrum of frequencies, you're taking into account individuality that everybody's gonna resonate to different frequencies. 
So this is why it is so important to get a good signal. The signal is the heartbeat of a PMF system. The signal is the music. And when you've got a good signal, you're gonna, it's gonna give your cells music. It's gonna give your cells energy. It's gonna give your cells health and vitality. A poor signal that doesn't resonate, it's not gonna have any effect. It's just gonna pass right on through you. So I hope you enjoyed this video because this is such a really big confusion in all of PMF therapy. And I've only heard one other scientist really talk about this. And it, it just needs to be talked about more to really understand a PMF signal. So thanks for watching. Please again, do subscribe to my channel. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. And, and leave some comments below. I'd like to know what you think. And let me know what you'd like to hear for, for the next Whiteboard Wednesday. So thanks again and have a great rest of your day.